Today, we will talk about the Air Data Computer. This is one of the systems that have made it possible to move from conventional analog instruments to the new digital instruments, which are more accurate and reliable. So before we look in detail at how this computer works, let's look at how the conventional analog instruments work. In this type of system, each sensor sends the information directly to the relevant instruments, either by means of pneumatic lines that transmit the pressure directly, as in the case of the pitted tube or the static port, or by means of electrical connections, as in the case of the total air temperature probe and the angle of attack probe. Now, it is important to note that each instrument is independent, and therefore the information it displays is isolated from the rest of the instruments. This implies that based on the information provided by each individual instrument, the crew must manually calculate other derived data, such as the true airspeed or the static air temperature. Apart from this, each instrument has its own gears, capsules, and other moving parts. This results in a more complex system, which leads to errors and inaccuracies due to mechanical imperfections, friction, delay, among other factors. This implies that the crew must manually apply the necessary corrections published in the aircraft manual for the affected instruments. This results in an increased workload for the crew, as well as in restrictions, to operate in certain airspaces or perform some procedures that require a high level of accuracy. Now, taking into account all the limitations and disadvantages of conventional analog instrument systems, the Air Data Computer was developed. The Air Data Computer, abbreviated as ADC, is a unit that receives and processes the information from the sensors to calculate different parameters and send them to the relevant instruments electronically. To be exact, we must say that this computer is only one of the components, since the system as such is known as the Air Data System, or ADS. Now that we have seen the general principle of operation of this system, Let's look at the sensors that provide information to the ADC. This unit receives information from the pitted tube, the static port, the total air temperature probe, and in some cases, from the angle of attack probe. Now, the information received from these sensors is completely raw, so the task of the ADC is to integrate and process this data. Once the information has been processed, the ADC uses formulas stored in its memory to calculate all the parameters derived from this data. Normally these parameters are the barometric altitude, the vertical speed, the indicated airspeed, the static air temperature, the true airspeed, the Mach number, and the angle of attack. Now, these resulting parameters are calculated electronically by the microprocessor, which facilitates integration into different types of instruments. For example, these data can be sent to analog instruments that are adapted to receive electronic inputs, or they can also be sent to electronic flight instrument systems with digital presentations. The instruments normally fed by the ADC are the airspeed indicator, the altimeter, the vertical speed indicator, the Mach meter, the angle of attack indicator, the outside air temperature indicator, and in some cases, the true airspeed and total air temperature indicator. Here we can see the same instruments and parameters, but in a digital presentation. The only instrument that we don't see here is the Mach meter. And that is because this particular image corresponds to a primary flight display of a small aircraft where the Mach number is not operationally relevant. So far we have said that the information processed by the ADC is sent to the flight instruments. However, it can also be sent to other systems that require such data. For example, the autopilot and flight director system, the transponder and ADSB, the monitoring and warning system, the flight management system, the flight data recorder, and the ACARS. As we have already seen the instruments and systems fed by this computer, we have to mention that there are two types of ADCs. An ADC can be analog or digital, depending on the type of electrical output signal generated. The thing is that before being processed, the raw information must be converted to an electrical signal. For example, the total pressure information provided by the pitted tube must be converted to an electrical signal, which is done through a pressure transducer. Now, the electrical output signal of the transducer can be either an analog signal 
which is normally used to feed conventional instruments. Or it can be a digital signal, which is normally used to feed electronic instruments. With this in mind, let's see how the system works. First, the total and static pressure information from the sensors is converted to an electronic signal by the pressure transducers, which is sent to the microprocessor and memory of the ADC. It is important to note that the only two sensors that require a transducer are the pitted tube and the static port, since the total air temperature probe and the angle of attack probe already have a transducer in the sensor itself, so the information is directly sent to the processor. Then, after receiving the raw data in the form of electronic signals, the unit integrates and processes the information to calculate the different parameters. Now, another advantage of the ADC is that it uses electronic signals instead of pneumatic lines and capsules. This implies that the errors due to delay, friction, and mechanical imperfections that are present in conventional instruments are practically eliminated. And in addition to this, the ADC can store in its memory the position errors of the sensors under different flight conditions to correct the measurements automatically in real time. This substantially increases the accuracy of the information and reduces crew workloads, thus allowing to operate safely in airspaces and procedures that require a high level of accuracy. Now, we must say that the ADC not only increases the accuracy of the information, but also its integrity. This is possible thanks to a functionality known as built-in test equipment. This system regularly monitors and tests the integrity of the ADC data processing, thus ensuring that the indication of the instruments is correct and accurate at all times. Now, there are two types of processes. The power-up built-in test, which consists in an automatic test of the microprocessor, the memory store and the ADC general functions when the unit is turned on. And on the other hand the continuous built-in test, which monitors at regular intervals the information coming from the sensors and the parameters calculated by the ADC. Now, as we have seen in previous videos, the pitted static sensors can get blocked. In this case, if a blockage occurs in one or more sensors, the unit's built-in test equipment will detect it and display an alert on the affected instruments, as we can see in these images. In the image on the left, there are two red crosses indicating that the airspeed indicator, the altimeter, and the vertical speed indicator are inoperative, which may be due to a static port blockage. While if we are using analog instruments connected to the ADC, they will show a red flag which indicates that the instrument must not be used. Now, you might be wondering, what happens if the ADC suffers a total failure? Well, in this case, if the aircraft is equipped with a single ADC, the crew must use the standby analog instruments, since they are connected directly to the sensors in the same way as in a conventional analog instrument system. Now, talking about the system layout, smaller aircraft with simple systems usually have only one ADC. In this case, the sensors send the raw data to the computer, and then the processed information is sent to the instruments. However, these sensors also send the raw data to the standby analog instruments. This way, if there is a failure in the ADC, the standby instruments are not affected. Now, in aircraft with two sets of instruments, two ADCs are normally installed, each fed by its own dedicated sensors. This means that there are two sets of sensors as well, one for the captain's instruments and another for the first officer's instruments. This way, each group of sensors feed one ADC, and at the same time, each ADC feeds the corresponding group of instruments. In this case, either the captain's or the first officer's sensors will be used to feed the standby instruments. Although on some modern and more complex aircraft, a third set of sensors is installed to feed the standby instruments, thus providing greater redundancy. Now, something important to mention is that in designs where there is more than one ADC, although each one is independent, they are interconnected so that the information calculated by both units can be compared to detect blockages or failures. And in addition to this, there is also the possibility to select the ADC that feeds a certain group of instruments. For example, 
If in this case we have this configuration and the ADC number 2 fails, then the crew can select the ADC number 1 to also feed the first officer's instruments so they can work properly. In fact, larger and more complex aircraft can have up to three ADCs, as we can see in this schematic. However, one thing that may catch our attention is that the units are not called ADC, but ADIRU. This is because in modern aircraft, ADCs are integrated with other computers and units to complement the information and calculate other useful parameters. In the previous example, the ADC was integrated with the inertial reference system, giving as a result the air data and inertial reference system. In this case, the combination of these two units allows the calculation of parameters such as the wind direction and speed, the ground speed, and the wind correction angle. Here we have an example of the control panel of this particular system in an Airbus A320. And although the design and functionalities of the system may vary depending on the model and manufacturer, the principle of operation is the same. I hope the information provided in this video was useful. If so, don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.